September 23rd. Our reading in the Old Testament today will be from the book of Isaiah, chapter 41. We'll begin at verse 17. We'll go through chapter 43, verse 13. And just before we begin reading uh, the scripture, here's an overview of what we're going to find here. In uh, chapter 41, as the exiles prepared to return to their land, they looked around, they saw the other nations, and they were afraid. But God was and is in control of the nations, and he raised up Cyrus to do his bidding. Now the false gods of the nations are no match for the uh, true God of Israel. Then the exiles looked at one another and asked, Are we able to travel to our land and rebuild our nation? But God gave them assurance. He says, You are my servant. Fear not, for I am with you. I will help you. He can make a toothless worm into a sharp threshing instrument. He can transform the arid desert into a garden. And finally, they looked ahead and wondered about the future. Well, God knows the future. The idols do not. See, God is outside the timeline. He knows what's going to happen. And He has everything under control, so there is really no need to worry. Scripture tells us, don't worry about anything, instead pray about everything. In his wonderful chapter-by-chapter Bible commentary, Warren Wearsby says, As you contemplate your situation and face an unknown future, are you trusting Him? No, God's promise is still... I will help you. You can count on that. And as we uh, move on into uh, chapter 42, we'll see that God helped his servant, Jesus Christ. Uh, Matthew chapter 12 applies this to our Lord in his earthly ministry uh, to the needy. He was chosen by God and empowered by God. So he did not get discouraged and quit. Jesus Christ lived and served by faith, trusting his Father to meet his needs. And that's the way you and I must live today. His power is available to us. We'll see that God helped his servant Israel. Weak as they were, small as they were, the nation returned to the land after their years of captivity. They were spiritually blind and obstinate, but God led them and worked on their behalf. And you know what? God helps his servants today. That's you and me. When you belong to God's family, your Father is ready to forgive and restore you. Putting life back together again may appear impossible to us, But the Lord will work for you if you let Him. He can do new things, guide you on new paths, and give you a new song. And with that, let's begin today's reading in the Old Testament. September 23rd, Isaiah chapter 41, verse 17, through chapter 43, verse 13. When the poor and needy search for water and there is none, and their tongues are parched with thirst, Then I, the Lord, will answer them. I, the God of Israel, will never forsake them. I will open up rivers for them on high plateaus. I will give them fountains of water in the valleys. In the deserts they will find pools of water. Rivers fed by springs will flow across the dry, parched ground. I will plant trees, cedar, acacia, myrtle, olive, cypress, fir, and pine on barren land. Everyone will see this miracle and understand that it is the Lord, the Holy One of Israel, who did it. Can your idols make such claims as these? Let them come and show what they can do, says the Lord, the King of Israel. Let them try to tell us what happened long ago, or what the future holds. Yes, that's it. If you are gods, tell what will occur in the days ahead or perform a mighty miracle that will fill us with amazement and fear. Do something, whether good or bad. But no, you are less than nothing, and can do nothing at all. Anyone who chooses you becomes filthy, just like you. But I have stirred up a leader from the north and east. He will come against the nations and call on my name, and I will give him victory over kings and princes. He will trample them as a potter treads on clay. Who but I have told you this would happen? Who else predicted this, making you admit that he was right? No one else said a word. I was the first to tell Jerusalem, Look, help is on the way. Not one of your idols told you this. 
Not one gave any answer when I asked. See, they are all foolish, worthless things. Your idols are all as empty as the wind. Look at my servant, whom I strengthen. He is my chosen one, and I am pleased with him. I have put my spirit upon him. He will reveal justice to the nations. He will be gentle. He will not shout or raise his voice in public. He will not crush those who are weak or quench the smallest hope. He will bring full justice to all who have been wronged. He will not stop until truth and righteousness prevail throughout the earth. Even distant lands beyond the sea will wait for His instruction. God, the Lord, created the heavens and stretched them out. He created the earth and everything in it. He gives breath and life to everyone in all the world. And it is He who says, I, the Lord, have called you to demonstrate my righteousness. I will guard and support you, for I have given you to my people as the personal confirmation of my covenant with them, and you will be a light to guide all nations to me. You will open the eyes of the blind and free the captives from prison. You will release those who sit in dark dungeons. I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not give my glory to anyone else. I will not share my praise with carved idols. Everything I prophesied has come true, and now I will prophesy again. I will tell you the future before it happens. Sing a new song to the Lord. Sing His praises from the ends of the earth. Sing, all you who sail the seas, all you who live in distant coastlands. Join in the chorus, you desert towns. Let the villages of Kedar rejoice. Let the people of Selah sing for joy. Shout praises from the mountaintops. Let the coastlands glorify the Lord. Let them sing His praise. The Lord will march forth like a mighty man. He will come out like a warrior, full of fury. He will shout His thundering battle cry. And He will crush all His enemies. He will say, I have long been silent. Yes, I have restrained myself. But now I will give full vent to my fury. I will grasp and pant like a woman giving birth. I will level the mountains and hills and bring a blight on all their greenery. I will turn the rivers into dry land and will dry up all the pools. I will lead blind Israel down a new path guiding them along an unfamiliar way. I will make the darkness bright before them, and smooth out the road ahead of them. Yes, I will indeed do these things. I will not forsake them. But those who trust in idols, calling them their gods, they will be turned away in shame. Oh, how deaf and blind you are toward me! Why won't you listen? Why do you refuse to see? Who in all the world is as blind as my own people, my servant? Who is as deaf as my messengers? Who is as blind as my chosen people, the servant of the Lord? You see and understand what is right, but refuse to act on it. You hear, but you don't really listen. The Lord has magnified His law and made it truly glorious. Through it He had planned to show the world that He is righteous. But what a sight his people are, for they have been robbed, enslaved, imprisoned, and trapped. They are fair game for all and have no one to protect them. Will not even one of you apply these lessons from the past and see the ruin that awaits you? Who allowed Israel to be robbed and hurt? Was it not the Lord? It was the Lord whom we sinned against, for the people would not go where he sent them nor would they obey His law. That is why He poured out such fury on them and destroyed them in battle. They were set on fire and burned, but they still refused to understand. But now, O Israel, the Lord who created you says, Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fire of oppression, you will not be burned up. 
the flames will not consume you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel your Savior. I gave Egypt, Ethiopia, and Seba as a ransom for your freedom. Others died that you might live. I traded their lives for yours, because you are precious to me. You are honored, and I love you. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will gather you and your children from east and west and from north and south. I will bring my sons and daughters back to Israel from the distant corners of the earth. All who claim me as their God will come, for I have made them for my glory. It was I who created them. Bring out the people who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf. Gather the nations together. Which of their idols has ever foretold such things? Can any of them predict something even a single day in advance? Where are the witnesses of such predictions? Who can verify that they speak the truth? But you are my witnesses, O Israel, says the Lord, and you are my servant. You have been chosen to know me, believe in me, and understand that I alone am God. There is no other God. There never has been and never will be. I am the Lord, and there is no other Savior. First, I predicted your deliverance. I declared what I would do, and then I did it. I saved you. No foreign god has ever done this before. You are witnesses that I am the only God, says the Lord. From eternity to eternity, I am God. No one can oppose what I do. No one can reverse my actions. September 23rd Our reading in the New Testament today is from the book of Ephesians chapter 2 verses 1 through 22. We'll go from death to life here. You know, lost sinners are not simply sick people needing help. No, they are dead people needing life. The Son of God died that we might receive life through faith in Him. We move from bondage to freedom. Lost sinners are in bondage to the world, the flesh, and the devil, and cannot free themselves. In Christ, you have true freedom. Now God is working in you and through you to accomplish His great purposes. We'll go from the tomb to the throne. God did not give you life and leave you in the cemetery. Oh, he lifted you up to sit on the throne with his victorious son. And we'll move from separation to reconciliation. In Jesus Christ, believing Jews and Gentiles are now one. The barriers have been removed. Believers are members of one body, citizens of one holy nation, and living stones in one temple. All of this is of God, his marvelous love, and his grace and kindness. No wonder Paul opened this letter with a doxology. And let's read all about it right now as we begin today's narration of the New Testament. September 23rd, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 22. Once you believers were dead, doomed forever because of your many sins. You used to live just like the rest of the world full of sin, obeying Satan, the mighty prince of the power of the air. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passions and desires of our evil nature. We were born with an evil nature, and we were under God's anger just like everyone else. But God is so rich in mercy, and He loved us so very much, that even while we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when He raised Christ from the dead. It is only by God's special favor that you have been saved, for He raised us from the dead along with Christ, and we are seated with Him in the heavenly realms, all because we are one with Christ Jesus. And so God can always point to us as examples of the incredible wealth of His favor and kindness toward us, as shown in all He has done for us through Christ Jesus. God saved you by His special favor when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It is a gift from God. 
Salvation is not a reward for the good things we have done, so none of us can boast about it, for we are God's masterpiece. He has created us anew in Christ Jesus, so that we can do the good things He planned for us long ago. Don't forget that you Gentiles used to be outsiders by birth. You were called the uncircumcised ones by the Jews, who were proud of their circumcision even though it affected only their bodies and not their hearts. In those days, you were living apart from Christ. You were excluded from God's people Israel, and you did not know the promises God had made to them. You lived in this world without God and without hope. But now you belong to Christ Jesus. Though you once were far away from God, now you have been brought near to Him because of the blood of Christ. For Christ Himself has made peace between us Jews and you Gentiles by making us all one people. He has broken down the wall of hostility that used to separate us. By His death, He ended the whole system of Jewish law that excluded the Gentiles. His purpose was to make peace between Jews and Gentiles by creating in Himself one new person from the two groups. Together as one body, Christ reconciled both groups to God by means of His death, and our hostility toward each other was put to death. He has brought this good news of peace to you Gentiles, who were far away from Him, and to us Jews who were near. Now all of us, both Jews and Gentiles, may come to the Father through the same Holy Spirit, because of what Christ has done for us. So now, you Gentiles, are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. We are His house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Christ Jesus Himself. We who believe are carefully joined together, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. Through Him, you Gentiles, are also joined together as part of this dwelling where God lives by His Spirit. Psalm 67, verses 1 through 7. This missionary psalm exhorts us to get the message out to all the nations of the world. Why? Because they need light. The lost walk in darkness and need the light of God's face to shine upon them. They have lost their way and are headed for eternal darkness. Does that burden you at all? And because they need joy, sin gives pleasure for only a short time. But in Christ, there are pleasures forevermore. How can we keep to ourselves the joy that Jesus gives? And because they need righteousness, which can come only through faith in Jesus Christ. Man's righteousness can never satisfy the demands of God's holy law. And because they need life. The field is the world. But that field is not producing fruit to the glory of God. Only with God's life and blessing can the harvest of righteousness come. If every believer did what you do about missions, would all the people of the earth be praising the Lord? Psalm 67, verses 1 through 7. For the choir director, a psalm. To be accompanied by stringed instruments, a song. May God be merciful and bless us. May His face shine with favor upon us. May Your ways be known throughout the earth, Your saving power among people everywhere. May the nations praise You, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise You. How glad the nations will be, singing for joy, because You govern them with justice and direct the actions of the whole world. May the nations praise you, O God. Yes, may all the nations praise you. Then the earth will yield its harvests, and God, our God, will richly bless us. Yes, God will bless us, and people all over the world will fear Him. Proverbs chapter 23, verses 29 through 35. Who has anguish? Who has sorrow? Who is always fighting? Who is always complaining? Who has unnecessary bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? 
It is the one who spends long hours in the taverns, trying out new drinks. Don't let the sparkle and smooth taste of wine deceive you, for in the end it bites like a poisonous serpent, it stings like a viper. You will see hallucinations, and you will say crazy things. You will stagger like a sailor tossed at sea, clinging to a swaying mast, and you will say, "They hit me, but I didn't feel it. I didn't even know it when they beat me up. When will I wake up so I can have another drink?"